Arrowhead. Uh, but we're not going to Arrowhead. We're going to New York. We're going to Manhattan. The city that never sleeps. Ian Rappaport doesn't sleep. Uh, he is live from NFL headquarters in New York. Uh, Ian, a lot of talent on that Chiefs roster. A couple of young guys that they're going to be looking to lock up soon. They absolutely are, Mike, and they're in that window right now where the quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, is cheap, so they got some money to play with and make sure that some of their key young guys get paid. No, none more important than Tyreek Hill, their all-pro game-breaking receiver, obviously one of the fastest guys in the NFL. They do intend to try to work on a long-term extension with Hill this offseason. No doubt he's going to be one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid receiver in the NFL. Another player that's on the radar, Chris Jones, they're very talented defensive lineman. We've seen him over the course of the past couple weeks be incredibly disruptive. He is also someone they want to try to work out an extension with this offseason. As far as the franchise tag goes, I am told it is on the table for pass rusher D. Ford. That is something they have not ruled out, Mike. Another player they'd like to keep. A lot of pass rushers on this market, but a lot of teams probably going to use that franchise tag to keep those <laughs> pass rushers right. in-house. Frank Clark with the Seahawks. He's one of them. Yep. Mike Robinson used to play for the Seahawks. He's over there with Colleen. That's right. I'm over here with Mike Robinson. Steve, and it's time for Go Route, presented That's by good. Lexus. I ask the questions, then you guys go. It's a pretty easy route concept there. So one minute on the clock. Steve, I'm going to start with you. Okay. We just heard Ian talking about Tyreek Hill. So is he the receiver that has the biggest impact today? Absolutely. He's the guy that has the biggest impact uh, because of his speed, his playmaking ability. But it not, isn't necessarily him catching a pass. You have to always constantly know where he is on the field. He is. The, he makes your team uh, disruptive on the field. He makes you second guess everything. He keeps defensive coordinators up at night. So yes, he will have the biggest impact just now with the ball in his hands. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, Tyreek here will have a tremendous impact, but for me me, it has to be Mike Thomas, right? To me, this guy's been probably the best receiver in the league uh, this year. And uh, the reason why I say that is because he demands the coverage. Every single time he lines up, then he's going to have two sets of eyeballs looking at him, and he's going to take coverage to make other guys open. And it doesn't even matter if he has people on his back. He's going to catch it every single time, 85% chance that he catches the ball when you throw it to him. That's tops amongst wide receivers in the NFL today. That's a tough job to be a DB covering him. Yeah, because, um, I mean, he's big and physical and everything. And when he catches it, he runs with it. Too. Right, exactly. Okay, here we go, Mike Rob. Bigger home field advantage. This is a good one. Chiefs or Saints? Yeah, well, uh, you probably can guess what I'm going to say. Yeah. Right? Probably the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they play outside. You can guess that. that. Well, they play outside, Steve, so they have to deal with the elements, meaning that oh. the running backs are going to get the ball a little bit more. I know, I know, I know, man. But uh, that, that home field advantage, that weather, man, we talk about it. When it's cold, nobody want to tackle. It's harder to get warmed up, all of those types of things. So, to me, the, the Kansas City Chiefs have the home field advantage because they have the elements. And then that sound, man, it rocks. In Kansas City? Yeah. yeah. You, don't think, you don't think that's loud in Kansas City? Uh, it's not that loud. I know, really? I know a louder place. Oh. Is it Seattle the... is a loud place. Oh, well, you know. But then also... They, they, weren't, New, up, they weren't on the table. But so. also New Orleans <laughs> is a loud place. New Orleans has the acoustics just like Seattle. But... They have a cover over there, so it's hard to talk. You're talking to people like this. Amen. You're over there. You're reading guys' lips as they talk like but, slam. But don't away teams prepare for that in practice? You can prepare for it, but in a playoff game, NFC Championship game, mm -hmm. you can't prepare for that kind of noise. Prepare for the weather? Yeah, you can. You I can. mean, the, the Patriots do have some experience, yeah. though, in cold weather. I mean, they do, but I'm just saying you can't simulate the, 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 the weather true. map on your part of the country. Move along. Here we go. Uh, Steve, you're up here. Four great coaches on the sidelines yes. this weekend. you got to pick one if you could play for any of them. Who? So, just picking one, I'm going to go with Sean McVay. Just because of his creativity. And what is it? He's the new toy. Everybody wants to know. How He's like does the most he, popular kid. Yeah, how does he do it? Why is he doing it any different? Bill Belichick, you know what it is. He's the old he's the old guy, so you kind of like, yeah, been there, done that. Andy Reid, been there, done that. Uh, Sean Payton, been there, done that. But something about Sean McVay just seems to just resonate with the players. So I'm interested. What are they doing? Like, why are they so good? Why are they jumping around and jolly and having fun? I want to know. 
I tell you one thing. Uh, I, I like Sean as well. Sean does his thing, but I'm talking about Sean Payton. Oh. Sean Payton has mastered the art of communicating with his players. Do you see how the, how they be in the club after the game? Oh, yeah. And the Sean Payton be dance, he can't dance, but it's all good though, yeah, yeah. because he's communicating. He's 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 totally accepted the culture of the players, and they play for him. He's been doing it for a very long yes. time. Hey man, Andy Reid, I like. I would love to play for Andy Reid yeah. as well. Just being that they have stood the test of time. They have evolved just like. Uh, offenses have evolved, and I'm sure Sean McVay get a lot of his ideas Absolutely. from those two guys That's as well. That's true. Andy Reid, though. Come on, you gotta oh. want to play for him. I know, but see, previous to this year, Andy Reid didn't coach too well in big games, so... Um, mm. Well, see, maybe saying. that'll change today. We asked <laughs> you guys, saying. who would you want to play for? Oh, on Big Bay, there it is. Look at him. Everybody roll with 89. You he right, bro. Right behind him, 29%. A lot, of millennials, a lot of millennials vote, and that's what, that's what it is. I know. They are. Only, well, I'm they surprised are. that uh, Peyton and Belichick were tied there. Interesting. The okay. old guard. You know how that is. So both the Patriots and Chiefs.